G'day, welcome back viewers to uh, episode 4, the mini lathe rebuild. I had to do something about what it was uh, or how it was because it was just rubbish and I just didn't like what I had. One of the first things I changed was the position of the motor and, and the mounting of it. I was having a few issues with uh, controlling the top end speed and it was making strange noises. The problem was in the motor the brushes are not centered on the on the commutator and they're offset and what I was doing was running the thing in reverse all the time when I was running forward so I moved it back down underneath and put in an idler shaft and which enabled me to run the thing forward all the time Next cab off the rank was to remove the the carriage, the original carriage I'd made, and uh, toss it in the bin, so to speak, and start with a clean slate, so I could do what I wanted to do. As I'd said previously, I'd watched damn near every video I could find on home build lathes, and I'd seen guys using pieces of angle iron, normally mounted upwards, so the V was as rails, and I decided I would come up with my own idea and mount them sideways. On one of my trips to the local scrap dealers slash recyclers I picked up a piece of C channel or U channel. I had no idea at the time what I'd use it for but whenever I see something I think might be useful I grab it. So I decided to use it uh, as my as a base for the for the bed and mount these pieces of angle iron on the sides of it to uh, to create rails. I reinforced the bottom of it as well with another 10mm piece of flat plate. The rail followers are mounted to two pieces of 16mm plate uh, that are then bolted to a top plate which is 20mm thick. I had some reservations about cutting up this 20mm plate with a, an angle grinder because I, I don't own a bandsaw, I wish I did but I don't. And uh, the reservations came to fore when the angle grinder decided it didn't like me anymore and attacked me. I was sitting down at the time and it uh, got me on the top of the leg. Rather painful little episode. It took a while to heal up but uh, just after it had finished healing up the grinder attacked me again and got me almost at right angles to the original hit. After all of that it's time to uh, <coughs> mount it up to the lathe bed and see if we can make it all fit. I had to extend the C channel a little because it was 50 millimeters too short but that last 50 millimeters is only where the Tailstock Park, so it wasn't a real issue. You can see uh, I added wipers to the uh, to the slides so that it'll keep all the crap off. This design has no gibs per se. You can see the three adjusting screws, and the dark added cap screw is a, a lock, so that I can lock the carriage in place. Over on the back of the carriage, you can see the six countersunk cap heads that hold the rear rail follower in place. It's held firmly and can't be adjusted. My lead screws are all right hand and initially I thought yeah I can, I can get used to turning them backwards to uh, operate it but it was driving me nuts so I decided I would uh, add some gearing so that when I turn the handle in the right direction it would move forward when I turn clockwise and backwards when I turn any clockwise. As I've mentioned previously, I'm basically a lazy bastard and uh, I like having power feeds on things. So my new version of the lathe has a, uh, a better power feed. I used a, a car windscreen wiper motor and it's driven through uh, a tooth belt and a, and a gear that's engaged into the other two gears on the back for the hand operation. Originally I had the, the windscreen wiper motor mounted to the back of the, the bed but I was having issues with keeping the belt tensioned when it was engaged as it swung through a funny arc. So I've now redesigned it and it's all one unit pivoting on one bolt and works much much better. It has a forward and reverse switch and I can vary the speed to control the feeds works very very well. I can have very fine finishes. 
Oddly enough, cuts better going backwards than forwards, but that may still be a problem with the rails in the, the linear rails in the cross slide. With my belief that the bulk of the slop in the linear rails was in the main carriage itself, and not having anything much to uh, to build new cross slides and and things, I decided I'd, I'd stick with the linear rails for the cross slide and, and see how well it worked. It is an improvement, but uh, Coming in another video will be an entire build of a new cross slide, compound slide, which I think will get this to a point where it's just a perfect little machine. The cross slide got the same gear treatment as the carriage did, so that when I turn the handle clockwise the carriage moves in and anti-clockwise will move it back out. Much more civilised way of doing things. Before bolting the cross slide down to the carriage, I needed to tram it in, so I, I just used a dial gauge and trammed it across the face of the chuck mounting plate. Next thing on the agenda was to mount the tailstock, and it got the same treatment as the main carriage, but I have to admit that I didn't take the time and effort to lap the bits of angle in that I took with the carriage, and consequently it's, it's not good and I need to revisit that. I shall do that in the near future. After I'd had it up and running again for a while, and, uh, the pissy little tailstock with its lack of reach and 3 8 chuck was starting to get to me. So I ordered a new 2 Morse taper tailstock through Lazada and the damn thing showed up as a 3 Morse taper and I had to send it back, set things back a while. When the replacement arrived I set about fitting it up, trying to tram it all up. I used a shaft out of a McPherson strut which is 20 millimeters on the main shaft and had a 8mm thread one end uh, which allowed me to put it in the chuck and I have a 20mm hollow spindle so I could pass it right up through the spindle and I thought it would do a great job but it's out a bit so I'll have to revisit that I think it's uh, a bit out in the spindle by this stage I only had about a week before I had to go to hospital and get my knee replaced and I didn't have anything much to, to continue on with on this or time to do it before I would be pushed into a three or four month layoff uh, to get over the knee op so I decided I would build something that I'd been wanting for quite a while and I made myself a little belt sander. The belts for it uh, that I ordered for it hadn't arrived by the time I left to uh, go and get my knee done so I didn't get to try it out until I got out of hospital and had recovered a little bit. The original little washing machine spin dry motor that I used proved to be not fast enough and not enough grunt so I ordered a 220 volt DC motor run through a rectifier with a speed controller. Does a great job. Well that's me done for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to smash that like button and stay up to date with my future releases and part two of the lathe upgrade which will include a piece of equipment that I'm very very proud of and uh, as it's something I've never ever done before. Now, thanks for watching. Quick footnote. Uh, future releases will have much, much more video footage in them and less stills. Thanks again. Bye-bye.